Joining me to talk about all of this is Claudia Chender, the NDP leader. Claudia Chender, thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for having me, Todd. Good morning. All right. Good morning. So health care, health care, health care. My goodness gracious, pretty much uh, dominated the the day, and that's to be expected, yeah. I suppose, eh? Absolutely. I mean, it's at the top of everyone's mind, and the government's made it clear it's at the top of their agenda, so that's that's what we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. So what uh, what's your takeaway on what the government's introduced so far, I guess? Well, I think the incentives for uh, nurses and healthcare workers was, of course, welcome. Although, you know, we are now hearing from many folks who, you know, feel like maybe they were left out of that, whether that's nurses on maternity leave or people working long-term care, you know, the whole system is under stress, but Mm -hmm. obviously, you know, our nurses deserve an enormous thank you. And so I think that was an important step. Um, And I, you know, I think there are lots and lots of announcements, but, you know, talking to your last guest, I caught the end of that, you know, and as you and I have talked about, I think we're still facing a real crisis in primary care. Uh, You know, the numbers on that doctor wait list are rising every single month since this government came in. And now we're hearing about 8,000 more patients in HRM who are going to be without a doctor when two clinics close. So I think that's certainly at the top of a lot of people's minds right now. All right, so there's a lot of talk about partisanship going on here, playing part, playing politics with all of this, and it's coming from both sides of it, actually. Uh, is is pol- are partisan politics being played here? What are your thoughts on, on all of that? Well, I mean, we have a partisan political system, so I'm not sure how to answer that. I mean, I think I... I I'm being honest when I tell you, Todd, that when I go into that legislature, you know, I go in to represent the people who elected me um, and the people who I talk to every day across this province to represent their concerns and to make sure that the government is acting on them. And, you know, that goes from everything to what is the government doing and you know, what what are what actions are they taking? So that's like the primary care piece and housing, which we've been talking a lot about, but also the way that they're doing it. And so, you know, we, is it partisan? Maybe, but yeah. that's our job. Like our job is to go into the legislature and to make sure that we hold the government to account and that we uh, understand why they're doing what they're doing. And so, you know, Tim Houston is, is really quick to call people partisan, but he sort of invented the game when he was, uh, you know, in opposition, and he did it very successfully. He pointed out holes in the government's agenda. He held the government to account, and now he's the premier. And that's how that works. That's yeah. the system we have. So, you know, I think um, there's always going to be an element of partisanship. But I think, you know, as I've said before, we are actually in a moment where the first time since I remember really everyone seems to agree on what the big issues are, health care, cost of living, um, environment. I think those are the things that, that really are kind of rising to the top for people. And there's going to be differences in opinion on how we tackle them. And that's why people elect their representatives to have those conversations. All right, so I guess uh, g- g- being more specific, there's 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 an uh, I guess an accusation. I don't know if that's the right term of putting it, but uh, a way of putting it. But this retention mm-hmm. incentive for doctors working in urban areas of the of the central mm-hmm. zone, and and mm-hmm. I I guess the claim is or or is that perhaps the conser- progressive conservatives have removed this because they don't have a, a, a big footprint in HRM in this area, and they're therefore mm-hmm. wanting to. Uh, give more attention uh, to or to favorable ridings in rural areas when it comes to health care and doctors. Do you stand by that mm-hmm. assertion? Well, I think, you know, uh, yes, I said I, I, I did make that assertion yesterday. And what I said directly after that was, if that's not the reason, then the government needs to tell us why. So we know that in HRM, we have... Uh, you know, our, the number of people without a family practice has skyrocketed since this government came in. And the, one of the key reasons for that is that when this government came in, they canceled the incentive mm-hmm. to set up a practice in HRM and left it in the rest of the province. And they canceled the incentive to take more patients for doctors into HRM. 
Meanwhile, this government has said they want to have the most aggressive immigration targets in history. They want us to double our population. And we know that most of those people are settling here in the HRM and they will not have a doctor and they may not have a doctor for years. And there is something the government can do about that. They can put that incentive back. So, Todd, I I mean, certainly I think this government, by their own admission, came to power with a focus on rural Nova Scotia. You know, rural Nova Scotians are the ones who elected them. And rural Nova Scotia also, as we know, is suffering from doctor shortage. Like, no one in the province is immune. But but what we see right now is not a level playing field. So there are more people in HRM without a family doctor than in most of the rest of the province. And this government refuses to act while at the same time saying that, you know, money is no object. Uh, They're going to do everything they can. They're going to go faster, harder, better. And yet we have two clinics closing who have said we have asked the government for help. They have refused to provide it. And so now we have to close. We don't want to close. We want our patients to stay attached. But now we have to. That's eight thousand people in the HRM who are going to be added to this list because the government refuses to help these clinics stay open. And we have no incentive for doctors to practice in HRM. I mean, I think it's a head scratcher, honestly. So I don't know if it's because they're more focused on rural Nova Scotia. If that's not the reason, Todd, then I hope they'll tell us what it is. And we'll we'll be asking them again. Okay, so so the the health minister says the decision was was informed by data. Uh, followed a recommendation from the Office of Healthcare Professionals Recruitment, which was at that time headed by then CEO uh, Dr. Kevin Oral. What are your What's your mm-hmm. response to that? Show us the data. Yeah, I mean, they, it's fine for them to say it's informed by data, but informed by what data? And what does the data say? Does the data say that? more people in HRM should not have a doctor than in the rest of the province. Like I don't, again, understanding that people across this province need access to a family health home, like your last guest was saying. And I think, um, you know, it's true that it's very difficult in some cases to attract doctors to rural Nova Scotia. So uh, we absolutely support that incentive being available in rural Nova Scotia. We're just saying, why on earth wouldn't you make it available in HRM too? Okay, so some of the other work, uh, talking about sick notes, I think that uh, most would agree that this is probably a good move to uh, eliminate the need for sick notes, not eliminate, but to reduce the need for sick notes. What are your thoughts Mm -hmm. on that? That's something that the NDP caucus has been pushing for for a really long time, Todd, and so we're really glad to see it, you know, it... That not just sick notes, but, you know, all kinds of, you know, medical forms in general. It takes up a huge amount of time for doctors if you can even get to see a doctor. And so we know that there are cases, and I was just talking to someone in CBRM about this a few weeks ago, where, you know, there's paperwork that needs to get filled out. But you actually, if you don't have a family doctor, often you actually can't even get it filled out because there's lots of paperwork that a walk-in or certainly virtual where you're not even seeing a person um, can't fill out. So this is a necessary move and one we've been calling on for a really long time. So we're really happy about that. But there are some really problematic parts of that legislation, too, where, you know, the government has now taken it upon themselves to regulate medical professions. Yeah. You're talking about the scope of practice here, right? That's that's where you're getting at? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I think that's very concerning. We heard this from the College of Physicians and Surgeons. You know, we have self-regulated professions that exist to regulate these complex medical and other professions in the public interest. That's the whole reason they exist. It's a, and it's a system that's really important for patient safety and making sure that when you go to the doctor or you access health care, that you're accessing good health care and the best health care available, which we have in Nova Scotia. We're very proud of our medical professionals and standards of practice. So absolutely, scope of practice. Um, can and should be expanded in lots of cases, but the regulators are the ones to do that. So I think it's very worrisome that the government would try to take that power for themselves. Right. So that, and again, because cabinet, I guess they would. They, I don't know how much consultation they would do, but they they certainly wouldn't have that inherent expertise or skill set, which, which, which and experience, not. right, when it comes to making these decisions, right? It's pretty evident. No, of course not. Yeah, right. no, and it requires really. Um, detailed expertise in the area, particularly when you're talking about medicine. Like, you know, I don't, I, I, I have lots of respect for my colleagues, but I would in no way respect, you know, sort of rely on them to understand 
understand the intricacies of surgery or the medical profession or what's required in terms of education. And we know that when this bill came out, the regulators were not consulted with. So it's not really setting a good tone. Right. Yeah. You know, they're saying, oh, of course we would talk to people, but they didn't. Right. And I think that's very concerning. I think it's a real, um, yeah, I think it's a power grab. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we all know that healthcare needs to be fixed and the regulators have shown that they're on board. And so they need to empower them and work with them uh, rather than trying to take their power away. Okay. Uh, Claude, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care. Claudia Chender, leader of the NDP.